Hello, this is Telecom TV. We are at the Wireless Global Congress in London and I'm talking with Chris R. Raja, who is VP Engineering Strategic Programmes with Boingo Wireless. Chris R., thanks for talking to us and welcome. No Boingo of old, I must say. Let's get into this. What do you think Wi-Fi's role is in a 5G world? Will 5G not put an end to Wi-Fi? Thanks, Martin, for having me. I think it's a very important question to start with. If you look at the evolution that's happened in Wi-Fi, we have about 8 billion Wi-Fi devices in market as of today, with 3 billion Wi-Fi devices released just last year. It's also estimated that the uh, Wi-Fi market by 2020 will have a market cap of $800 billion. So putting all these in perspective, also the key fact that mobile operators will have to spend at least $25 billion to deploy networks if they don't choose to offload data on Wi-Fi. So putting all of these into perspective, Wi-Fi is an essential part, a very key component technology towards 5G deployment. And also not to mention that all the key 5G use cases as defined in IMT 2020, Wi-Fi satisfies them. So it's, Wi-Fi is really well positioned for 5G deployment. Thanks, Kishore. How about um, adopting carrier-grade Wi-Fi as it's referred to? Why is a consistent user experience, fully integrated end-to-end -end network and network engagement so imperative for 5G? I think consistent user experience is key for any type of deployment. Um, and Wi-Fi is no exception um, particularly. And more importantly, given the challenges Wi-Fi had with all different types of connecting connections and various experiences, it was a key um, item to be fixed especially heading towards 5G deployment. So I would say um, having a key consistent user experience, uh, maintaining seamless network discovery, seamless mobility, having authentication and policy control, uh, having the concept of monitoring the network post deployment, putting all of these things together, it, it makes Wi-Fi a powerful technology for deployment towards 5G. Okay then, on we go. How do you combat the data surge with convergence? I mean, we know how much data is being used and sent and transmitted back and forth, surging all the time more and more. So if you look at the amount of data consumed, roughly about 80% of the wireless traffic gets consumed indoors. So indoors and venues specifically uh, is what is driving the Wi-Fi technologies. So in the past, it, it always used to be the macro towers powering all these venues. But it was not a good way of doing. It wasn't sufficient. It wasn't dense enough for all the users connecting in the venues. But fast forward to present today, you have multiple technologies uh, driving the densification. You have DAS, which is distributed antenna system. You have carrier-specific small cells. And of course, Wi-Fi. Combination of all of these technologies densify the indoor venues. But is that sufficient? Of course not. With all the growing demand for mobile data, you need more and more uh, ways of connecting the user. So the future convergence, uh, the way it would look like is, you have Wi-Fi 6, you have technologies like CBRS, Multifire, LTE Advanced, as well as 5G new radio. So it's essential for Wi-Fi to really coexist with all of these technologies and collectively provide that consistent experience in these venues. What about multipath technologies? Where do they stand in all this? Again, heading towards 5G, um, and if you look at the definitions of 5G, 5G does not favor one particular technology. It's all about seamless connectivity through various different types of uh, technologies. So uh, the different multi-path technologies, I think, are well positioned towards uh, 5G deployment. There are a couple of challenges in the industry right now. Especially if you go to places like Southern California, you have Wi-Fi hotspots all over on the streets. So when you have your device configured to connect to those Wi-Fi hotspots, and if you're driving in your car like five to 10 miles an hour, you're not driving very fast, but you're driving just fast enough to hop from one access point to another access point. In contrast, I would say um, connecting to macro towers at high speeds. Imagine if you're not able to maintain that seamless connections across these towers. That is a challenge we have in uh, Wi-Fi right now. So the concept of multi-path technologies allows uh, for users in these scenarios to use 
multiple technologies besides Wi-Fi, perhaps LTE uh, radio, to augment the data traffic in these challenging scenarios. Another example I can think of is uh, Captive Portal and uh, Wall Gardens. So if you have a venue that offers both Captive Portal network as well as seamless connectivity using Passpoint, for instance, um, and if the device chooses to connect to a Captive Portal, user experience is stalled over there. If we, if we can find a mechanism to augment LTE in that area, I think it goes a long way in user experience. Kishore, you mentioned Passpoint just now. Can we go into that a little more deeply? Why is it important to carry a roaming? And is it available now? I mean, Passpoint is really near and dear to me. I've been working on the Passpoint standards since the initial uh, Wi-Fi Alliance standards were announced uh, six to seven years back. And one of the key things that Passpoint solves, which was always a challenge in Wi-Fi, was uh, seamless network discovery, as well as secure connectivity. So the first hop of connection from a mobile device onto a Wi-Fi access network is, is completely seamless now. Uh, users need not install an app. Users don't have to go to Wi-Fi settings and figure out what Wi-Fi network to connect to. It's all automatically configured provision. So when users walk into a Wi-Fi network that actually broadcasts a Passpoint supported network, devices seamlessly connect. Uh, the second aspect is through the connection process, Passpoint uses mutual authentication protocols like EEP and 802.1x, which uh, allows a secure connectivity for these devices. And last but not the least, once the devices are connected to these networks, it uses industry standard 802.11i to encrypt the data. So uh, there's data integrity maintained across these networks. So collectively put all this together, Passpoint is well positioned to do uh, Wi-Fi roaming at a larger scale, and it has an incredible runway when it comes to deployments globally. So is Passpoint available in networks now? And if so, where? I mean, have you, is, it in, is it beyond use case and into, into deployment? Absolutely. It's, it's long been since Passpoint is out in the field. I mean, we have deployed several Passpoint networks at Boingo in many of the airports, military bases, convention centers, and we also have carriers offloading their users automatically and securely onto this Passpoint. And we urge every single operator, service provider, as well as enterprise to deploy Passpoint going forward. I don't know about military bases and all the rest of it, but I do know from cruel experience traveling the world as we do, um, that Wi-Fi in airports can be a, a bind. Does Passpoint make all the difference? It, it does, and it's, it, it's exactly positioned to address those scenarios, especially in a public venue when you have a floating population, people just walk in for 15 minutes, 30 minutes, depending on their scenario. You want to make sure that users get connected seamlessly and, um, and they have a frictionless user experience, and Passpoint really solves those use cases. That is the reason why it's compelling in the Wi-Fi industry. A really interesting interview. Kishore Raja, thank you very much indeed. Thanks, Martin.